today I am on my way to get my radio replaced. Not with the factory one either. Anybody who's ever owned a Ford Flex in the communities, online, form boards and everything else, they all say that you can't replace the factory radio in these cars with an aftermarket one. Well, today I'm going to go do exactly that. I'm getting an aftermarket one. Uh, I think it's going to be the Halo ILX F511. We'll see though. That's that's the one I want. So if they can make it work, we're going to get it work. But there is an aftermarket um, dash kit for these cars. I'll post links in the description below. Um, it's going to replace all that and it's also going to replace this here with um, an HDMI port and two USB, I think 2.0 ports, plugs, what do you want to call them? So I'm going to go over that once again after I have everything installed. Uh, if they can't get the F511 uh, to fit in here, I'm probably going to have to default to whatever screen size that is. I think it's like a 7 inch or 9 inch screen. So they have the, um, the ILX F509 that will fit in there. That's not the one I want, but I mean, if that's the only thing they have, that's what they have that'll fit, you know, so... Uh, yeah, <laughs> this will be the last time I'm looking at the screen though. So, see you when I get the everything in, re, or see you when I get everything installed. All right, guys, so I'm back. It has been a full day, they finally have everything in and installed. You see, this is absolutely 100% possible you know aftermarket in a Ford Flex and the compass still works and my code's still going off yes that is 250,000 miles anyways so here's what I got and the old everything down here got the old module that people say you need you don't need this thing man like clearly you don't so you can go in the, in the options here or the, the main menu go to vehicle info and you have all of your AC controls you got gauges so you can Then vehicle info. So if I want my check engine light, if I got a check engine light on, it'll pop up. I do, so I don't think that's sent any information over yet. Um, you can go your go to the setup and the Maestro setup, and then vehicle features, vehicle settings, and then if you have ambient lighting, which for some reason they think I do, I don't. You can enter your keypad code in. You can go to your factory camera settings and get that set back up. Then you hit the camera button. Everything works. Yep, everything works. And then let me go ahead and put it in reverse real fast. Camera comes on. Park it. Radio comes back up. You have... I don't want to play my music. I don't want to get copyright. And hit maps. Let me make sure. Okay. Everything works. From that to that.
So for the cost of my install was just a little over $2,000. Um, now that's not going to be the same as your install. Mine was so expensive, mostly because of this in particular. Um, the ILX F511, I believe is $1,500. So your cost will vary based on the head unit you want. You can get a cheapo, you know, one off of Amazon for like a hundred dollars. As long as it's like I think it's a seven or a nine inch screen, you get a dash kit. I'll like I said, I'll throw that down in the in the description below. And then with the dash kit, um, you are going to have to customize it slightly and give it some adjustments because, um, at least with this radio in particular. It, uh, it won't sit in there just right. I don't know what those customizations were. The uh, I didn't ask to go back there in the shop. I didn't want to bother them. But it, there's going to be... I know I saw there's a couple of holes that need to be drilled. Because of the way that this sits in here. So the radio unit will sit like slightly at an angle. And the brackets are kind of straight so they have to angle the brackets so you gotta drill some holes to get it set per just right in there um, obviously I don't think the CD player is gonna work I had a CD in here but I guess it's gone um, but I'm not like, not like I need a CD player anyways cause you know I've got my everything on here um, Android Auto, um, all that. Then I've got in the main menu here, I've got, you can go um, the HDMI. It does, it does come with the HDMI, like I said, I forgot about that. So let me shine a light on in here. So that got replaced. So I have two USB 2.0s, an aux port, and an HDMI in. And the HDMI goes straight to here. All right. Thanks for watching. I completely forgot about this feature on this radio in particular. So you can adjust literally everything. The fade and the balance, time correction, crossovers, uh, EQ settings, uh, media expander. I think you have three options for that, the MX. I'm not sure exactly what that does. I haven't really looked too much into it. I wasn't even sure if this was gonna be a for sure type of thing that would even fit in my car. I was told that they weren't even sure. So now I know for a fact that does fit, but uh, yeah, I'm so pumped about this radio and having this in my car now. So I just wanted to come back and throw this on the video for you guys. I'm going to go back to listen to my music. Um, oh, another another thing I noticed too. So I haven't even messed with any of the EQ, EQ settings or, you know, turning the, the bass boost on or anything like that. And this thing already unlocks the ability for your radio speakers to be even louder and apply more power to them. Now, for the factory speakers, obviously this isn't going to be a good thing over the, any long-term period of time, so I will be upgrading the speakers and I guess keeping the keeping the sound to a reasonable level in the, in, in the meantime. All right, thanks again. Bye.